Ma'at Hatat. I am Priestess Satra Nitor Kefa Abe Menuk Ma'at. Welcome. Today's video is titled, What Does It Mean to Be Beautiful? As this video I wanted to do a while back, as many of the videos, I had taken a, a long break from doing the videos that was being placed on YouTube. But I'm back in gear, I'm ready, and doing what needs to be said and shared. The reason for this video today is because I look at so many of our sisters around that are um, adding so much makeup onto their face and adding all these colors to their face and adding uh, tracks to their hair and adding individuals like um, synthetic hair to their hair for, you know, when they want to have the long hair or they have the human hair to even do that as well and we're continuously going outside of ourselves to feel accepted and to feel beautiful and many of us come up with the excuses of saying or justifying saying that well, okay well this is me I'm beautiful it doesn't matter if I have uh, permed hair or relaxed hair it doesn't matter if I have tracks in my hair if it doesn't matter if I want my hair to be straight it doesn't matter if I want my hair to be curly I don't it doesn't matter if I want my hair to have locks or if I want my hair to be in cornrows or these different things but you have to understand there are things that is so much that we do to be accepted in society to be accepted in this world one of the things that we do like for instance my eyebrows my eyebrows were just done maybe about a few days ago. Now, the natural state of who I am is my eyebrows connect. <laughs> and so I, I'm always laughing and joking myself and saying that I feel like Bert's cousin when, I'm, when I have my eyebrows that are connecting and they're full, you know. But because we are so, we're so adapting to society and to what is beautiful that when we go out to our jobs or looking for work or we're out going around people, meeting people for business and so on, we as women, we feel like there's so much that we need to do to beautify ourselves. Well, what we are told to how we need to beautify ourselves. So we get our eyebrows done, we get our face waxed, we get our um, fake eyelashes extended onto our, onto our eyelashes that we already have. We are wearing um, tons and tons of eyeliner, whole bunch of makeup you know we're putting even foundation on our face and you know to get rid of the blemishes and everything and you know like I said we're doing so much because this is what society is telling us how we need to be to beautify ourselves then you have the extreme of people who decide okay well I'm going to go to this color all the way over here I'm going to go to this color over here I'm going to wear my hair this way and that way you know and I don't want anybody to think that, I'm, that I would be putting you down for that. And that is not the case at all. This purpose of this video is just reminding you to embrace the beauty that was already there. You know, to have a little touch up here and there, that's what you wanna do, then that's okay. You know, but you have to understand why you're doing these things. You know, why do you want your hair to be straight? Why do you want your hair to, to not be coarse or kinky if that is how your natural state of hair was? Um, I had done a, I had done a uh, slideshow that I'm hoping that I'll be able to get out soon and to put it on my YouTube page, where it shows all these different stages that I went through, where, you know, when I was a, when I was 17, and I was at prom, and I had, because back then the kind of long, big, poofy hair was the thing, you know. So I had all these tracks put in and they were curled and they were beautiful, you know, and just, I was, I, I was like I was debutante or something. That's how I felt back then, you know, and I had it all long going down and had this beautiful turquoise dress that with my girlfriend's mom made for me for prom. And I thought I was just beautiful for getting my eyebrows done. That wasn't beautiful on just feeling the plucking and the, the waxing and the whoosh. Yeah, that didn't feel good. <laughs> but... The end result, at the time of how I felt, I felt beautiful. And it was, now that I think back at that time frame, and I'm like, why wasn't I beautiful without all that hair? What was I speaking to have all that hair, you know? Then, um, after prom, and we don't have to go into details of why it got like this, but after prom, uh, my hair, became, it was the, all that poofy tracks went straight. You know, so by the time I got to my graduation and everything, my hair was straight. 
you know and I was feeling really good about myself because I had this beautiful straight hair you know because um, when I was growing up originally I had very kinky hair and I was always getting my hair um, uh, pressed with a pressing comb to straighten it out and it took a while because I my hair is very coarse you know my hair is, is very much like my father's my father's hair is a very coarse and kinky hair and my mother's hair is very um, is curly because her father is an Indian so he you know with, with the going through that through the line she got more of his hair with a mixture of her mom's then I go I continue to go thin since I started off with tracks and I was also always getting my hair braided and cornrows with extensions all the time I kept wanting to keep my hair to grow you know I wanted to grow I wanted to be long and then when I let it grow to be long then what I do after my hair is all natural all over again what did I go do I go out and I get it relaxed again so it could be straight and that because I want to feel my fingers you know run through my hair and you know because to be honest when I was a child growing up I went to a predominantly white school I was living in um, Landover, Maryland, and my grandmother has sent me to Riverdale back to school, and at the time it really was a predominantly white school, and majority of everybody there didn't look like me. I used to be teased because I was dark skinned, and you know, even now my I still have you know a shiny forehead, you know, because I took a nice long walk that that got me here, um, and I did you know did a little sweat, <laughs> you know, but that's cool, that's natural. But um, they used to tease me a lot in school because I ha of how my hair looked. You know, I had bushy, I had bush, bush little things in my hair. That's very popular now, but back then, children teased you for it. They also teased you that the uh, the black children teased me because I was so dark. You know, I may not look like I'm dark now, but you know, I was dark then because I was always out in the sun, and um, I was ashamed of my hair. I was ashamed of my naturalness. I was ashamed of my kinks because so many kids were making fun of me and made me feel bad about that, you know? So when I got older, when I had a chance to change things about myself, I did that. I changed everything I could about me. And I, when I look back at that time frame and I, I see I was always beautiful because beauty is not about what the outside appearance looks like. It really isn't. You know, it's the beauty truly is what is within. And, and I remember when somebody would say, oh, what does she look like? And like, not me, but just in general saying that, what does she look like? Oh, she has great personality. And then I would learn that when a girl or a guy says that another girl has great personality, that means that visually she does not look appealing, but she has a great personality. She's a very, very, very beautiful and wonderful woman in the inside, but her outside did not match with what men would want you know and because we're, there's so many phases that men go through first they want nothing but a light-skinned girl when the light-skinned girl with long hair then okay now the chocolate sisters come in and now the chocolate sisters look good you know but then she still has to have long hair and even now we still have a lot of men who love sisters now whether they're light-skinned or dark-skinned whether they're thick women or thin women or medium built women they still like it with long hair and so we are constantly going out there. Now there are a few sisters out there that I have met that that care about their appearance for themselves, to take care of themselves and to take care of their skin and to take and to take care of their hair, to new to put the nutrients in the hair, feeding their hair with things that are not that are non chemical based, you know. But we need to start ask, really asking ourselves why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are we constantly putting these things into our hair, these chemicals into our hair, these tracks into our hair, this glue into our hair. We're threading hair into our hair. You know, who are we trying to look like? And I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm, um, I'm beating around the bush. And there are people who will say, no, this is not it, Kefa. Kefa, this is not how I, this is not what I'm doing. But is, is it not? Because what has happened is that the black sisters are doing everything they possibly can to look white. And now the white sisters are doing everything they can to look black. You know, the, the white women, they're putting um, what's that, collagen in their, on their mouth. And, you know, their, their butts are getting bigger. And they, get these, they got these hips. And they always have the chest. That's, that's one thing that the white women always have was the chest. But the black women, we will always have the hips and the, and the butt and everything. You know, and the full lips. 
now we're switching places you know and it's funny is that I think it's because it was always seemed to be forbidden you know it was forbidden for black men at a time to look at a white woman you know and to look at her in any way shape or form that could be what they would consider lustful and so their ways of doing things it's like okay now think times have changed things are different so I can go ahead and now I can talk to the white woman you know because now she's not forbidden but she was forbidden to my ancestors so now I'm gonna make sure that it's not forbidden to me uh, excuse me good to drink water throat was getting a little dry but anyway we need to do so much better than what we're doing and we have so much to grow on there's nothing wrong with loving yourself for who you are there's nothing wrong with accepting who you are and there's nothing wrong with, with if people cannot accept that of you then it's okay they don't have to accept you for who you are they don't have to accept you and and see the beauty in you because as long as you see the beauty in you that's all that matters you know we sacrificing and compromising are different things when it comes to everyday habitual things that you do in life you know maybe how you live and or maybe the fact of how the a route you may take you know different things that we do there's nothing wrong with sacrificing and compromising in that level but to sacrifice the beauty of who you are the kindness of your heart the joy that you bring the smile that lights up a room you know your eyes that when they say you can see your soul you know because it's the window to your soul you know, these things is what brings beauty. It's what you do for people and you do it out of the kindness of your heart. You're doing it because you love thy neighbor. And you treat thy neighbor as you would want them to treat you. And the thing is that now if they do not treat you the same as in as in the law of reciprocity, you must take a step back and see why it is that you're doing what you're doing and what was your expectations in this when you were doing what you were doing for the person beauty is about accepting yourself beauty is about knowledge and having that knowledge and expressing that knowledge and living that knowledge that you have not just believing in things because believing is doubt and I know that this may have nothing to do with this but I mean I'll put this in here since I did use the word believe for a moment is that I would rather somebody to not believe in me than to believe in me because to believe in me means you have doubt in me to say you don't believe in me means you don't that you don't doubt me and that's where the treasure comes from there your beauty comes in how you treat your body what you eat what you're consuming into your body your beauty comes from are you are you putting toxins in your body are you putting waste into your body are you putting chemicals in your body are you putting poisons in your body are you poisoning your mind with with false information and false doctrines are you are you putting in your mind um, music that that has a lot of a lot of negative energy coming from it and and saying negative things about women and negative things about our brothers and so on or about our children you know it's it's what we consume because what we consume comes out and that's just how that works because that's how what comes around goes around what you put out you get in return but also what you put in has to come out we need to be strong within ourselves we don't have to look like somebody else we don't have to look like the white lady next to us we don't have to look like the sis, the black sister next to us we don't have to look like the, the Indian sister next to us we don't have to look at the Asian sister next to us it's finding about who you are knowing thyself and taking root into that and going from there I went through so many stages of my life because of what I was feeling what I was going through in my life and relationships with family members boyfriends girlfriends and you know when I say girlfriends because sometimes you have to really express this girlfriends as in my female friends you know my women friends you know and when you're going through all these different things especially when you feel like what they call depression we express those things so like every time I was upset and I was going through something I would completely cut all my hair off I would go to the barber shop and go to have them cut it all off and luckily because I have a round head <laughs> 
I I could pull that off because not everybody could pull off a shaved head. You know, it wasn't bald, but it was pretty close. But um, we it was it took me a long time to accept myself. So many so many brothers would tell me how beautiful I am. They say you are such a beautiful queen. You're such a beautiful sister. You're such a beautiful goddess. And I'm looking at them like, what are you talking about? You know, because when I was growing up, you know, I've had so many different people in my life that, you know, female friends and I had them that were friends that were short, I had friends that are tall, I had friends that are thin, I had friends that are thick, I had friends that are in between, friends with long hair, short hair, you know, kinky nappy hair, crazy wild hair, you know, but because they were the norm of what men were looking for, I used to get pushed aside. I wasn't the first to be looked at, you know. It was the ones, the men who, a lot of some of the men who came to me that was that was serious on some level, they came to me because I was, I might have been a little bit more quiet one. I wasn't the one that was wearing all this makeup and loud, you know, because I was never a loud person. I was silly. <laughs> and I, well, I can't say was, I still am silly actually. <laughs> but mo a lot of people don't know that. There's, a, there's some people that do. But um, anyway, I just went through a lot, you know, and now... I have had a natural for quite some, for quite some time now. I'm growing my hair back so I can have my locks and get my locks back because I know that's what I was to have and even in a, a vision that I saw that I had it and what locks do what that means to me is a spiritual um, progress for me and something that is a connection between me and my hair and. You know, I was told by uh, one of the sisters that I was talking to, she couldn't understand why so many women get upset when their hair is cut all the way off or cut more than what it is, you know, because hair is just hair. But hair really isn't just hair because a hair, our hair is an expression of, of what we think we are or who we think we are. Our, our hair is an expression of who we know we are. Our hair is is a part of us and it, it's a part of our culture it's how we how our culture uses our hair and all the things that we can do especially for black women what we can do with our hair you know it's a very serious thing you know and we look at our hair as strength and power and when we when we don't have that the way that we would like it to we express that and we feel that you know we went through the black power stage with the mega bushes with the with the pick <laughs> with the pick hat that got the fist in it it was like black power and it's just ao you sitting there watching this ao tough nut bye black power <laughs> but um anyway it's something that we do for ourselves one of the things that i have been facing where i have found that beauty within my being and that comfort within my being to know that I am beautiful inside and out and that there's nothing that no one can tell me anything different no matter what they may see or think of me. My challenge that I have been up against and I'm sure many people have seen it and, and there have been people who have questioned about it. If you look at my skin, I have all these different things on my, the, what is not different? I have these scars on my skin and my skin was not always this way. If people who knew me, they knew that my skin was always very, it was dark brown with a reddish tint to it and it was very smooth and moisturized and things like that but about three years ago um, when I when I had moved into Baltimore and it's not being out and I'm not bringing down Baltimore so, because I'm in Baltimore now I'm here in Turner Station so you know this is it's a nice place to be I'm right here by the water because the water is my favorite thing if you notice that a couple of my videos about the water and when I was in New York <laughs> I wanted to do one at Central Park but I didn't have a chance to because the lighting was not good but I was in Baltimore I was living in Dundalk Maryland where I am now and I had a allergic reaction to bed bug bites and this is not something that's like it's uncommon thing but what happened was I, it came at a time where I was very stressed out I was having uh, some very difficult times at my job and my boss was always wanting to was acting like she was going to fire me every single step of the way and I was having some issues with my children because even though I know that I was a good mother I could say that I wasn't always the strongest mother and I didn't always put my foot down like I needed to because I didn't know how to because I didn't know how to put the foot put my foot down on my own life you know so I, it was a difficult time for me you know having financial issues and all types of things so when I got bit by the bed bugs 
because of the stress that I was under and then I was always scratching. Now my, my arms are like this here, my arms are like this here. It's even on my back, but that my back is now clearing up. And actually, even though it's a lot of people may not know it unless you've been up close to me, my skin is actually healing, you know, and it's because the more I have found peace within myself and the more that I find uh, my, find the truth of who I am, the more that I get past and overcome the, the situations and things that I've dealt with in my life, the more my skin stops itching, the more that my skin starts to, is doing its appeal thing on its own. And I, I'm doing my best to keep my skin moisturized again and feeding my skin nutrients and now getting back to eating more properly, drinking more water. <laughs> You know, my goal is to start drinking more, to drink alkaline water so that I can do, do better than what I am. I'm going to go into a fast soon. Um, tomorrow's Monday. I usually do my best to start fasting for four days a week, um, Monday through Thursday. Because uh, through the spiritual practices of the comedic sciences, uh, Monday is the representation of Uset. And that is your day of sacrifice and devotion. And you are sacrificing the things of... of of the fleshy nature so that you can rebuild yourself and rise into your spiritual consciousness and it helps your body to heal and that's what I'm and that's what I'm dealing with and going through but I had such a hard time dealing with my skin I didn't want anybody to see my skin so I was always wearing long shirts and because people when they see your skin and they and they don't understand what's happening they take a step back from you and they're like oh my gosh this girl got the plague she got something that she's going to spread to us you know and I've experienced that a lot. I've experienced that with people. Some people will actually just come up and ask me about it and other people will, you know, bring me down for it. That's a challenge in my life, you know? And at first I thought it was just, it was just plain stress, but it was stress mixed with being, having the allergic reaction to the bed bugs. And, and, I, and I can't say that it was actually just completely Baltimore because when I lived in, uh, the DMV, which we call that, you know, DC metropolitan area, um, which is DC, excuse me, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. When I lived in the DC metropolitan area in, Prin in Prince George's community, excuse me, Prince George's County, because of where I lived and it was such a stressful environment, I would always, like once or twice a month, go to the Marriott in Greenbelt and just relax and take my children there. We would have fun and. Bed bugs are there a lot too. You they, you would be surprised where you can find bed bugs. We've had outbreaks in many places, Baltimore, New York. Um, air, we had them in they were in airplanes, trains, anything because people can travel. They travel in their clothes, their bags, their their um, equipment, their furniture, and anything like that. Anywhere that they can find way to get around, they'll do that. Um, but that was a difficult time for me, and sometimes it still is because. You know, like right now, this is a big step for me to walk around and knowing that this video was going to be seen by many people and they're going to see all these scars on my body, you know, and and I, sometimes at night I would sit back and I'm crying and I'm crying so hard and so long because my body is so messed up because I was scratching so much and because I was scratching so much is I, I bruised my skin, you know, and now my skin looks like this. And that was a very hard thing to deal with because when you are out here, and especially if you want to be appealing to the opposite sex, you know, if, if that you want them to see the beauty in you, but you also know that they're visual creatures, so they're going to see the physical first before they know anything about you. So that was a difficult time, you know, but then you wonder, okay, well, I have the, uh, this is what's going on. And then the brothers that do approach me, then I was thinking to myself, well then what kind of person are you? You're not even questioning my skin condition. You don't know what my skin condition is. Are you ready to be all up in my face and, and touching me? Do you not care and you want to talk to any old body, you know? And that's a these are mental things, emotional things that women go through. Because you have women who have acne issues, they have eczema, they have just really bad you know, I might have do rest in, in what we're eating, smoking, drinking, having sex with multiple partners, because the more that we have sex with people, we are exchanging energies. We are exchanging our the spirits within each other. These emotions that they have, and we have to remember that, the for if, unless you two are literally a virgin, that if you have sex with Bob, Bob has sex with Janet. Janet has sex with Chris. Chris has sex with uh, um, whatever name you want to come up with after that. You know, and we have to remember you after having sex with one person, whoever 
that person have had sex with, you now have had sex with all of them, whoever he has had sex with, whether it was unprotected or not. Because juices and, and skin is touching skin and they're kissing and all this other stuff, all that part doesn't matter. On the physical, yes, because there are physical diseases that come from these things. But then it's the same thing for the female side. You know, she, whoever he, he when he's having sex with, we'll say me, because I'm the only one that's here right now, we, the man has sex with me, he's also having sex with everybody I've had sex with. So you have to think about these things. You really want to cleanse your body. You want to get through these things to beautify yourself, to, to know what the beauty of you really is. And a lot of us are have, we're terribly misinformed what it means to be beautiful. And a lot of women who are feeling so ugly and so, so turned in because men we are men are told that you are learned that this is the this is the beauty of women and women we see all these uh, these other beautiful women on magazines and they're thin long hair beautiful eyes and all this other stuff wearing these bathing suits and bikinis and things like that and they're women who are not able to wear those things because that's not their body form and so there's so many women out here who are hurting inside, who are hurting outwardly, they're quiet, and then they become insecure about themselves. And this is how they get into abusive relationships. This is how they get into abusive relationships with, with just people in their lives, no matter if it's personal or intimate or even with family. Because if we're insecure about ourselves and about the beauty of ourselves, then we're going to let any and everybody talk to us however we want, however they want to. They're going to treat us however they want to. And you're so much better than that. You may not know that for yourself. You may not see that for yourself. But know that you are a beautiful, beautiful woman. I don't care if you are a black sister. I don't care if you are a white sister. I don't care if you are an Indian sister. I don't care if you are an Asian sister. Beautiful is beautiful is beautiful and that is who you are you have to find that beauty within you it doesn't matter how much information you acquire you can be the most intelligent brightest woman on the face of the earth but if you still think that you are not a beautiful woman just based off of how they society tell us that looks are supposed to be then it makes you ugly and you're not ugly it's what makes a woman ugly it's how she presents herself. It's how she acts towards people. It's how she treats people. It's what comes out of her mouth. If beauty is not coming out of her mouth, then that is what makes her ugly. That what makes her not appealing. That what makes her not in the God state of mind. We are in this world, but not of this world. Physical beauty is what it is. One day we're going to get older. For those of us who make it past a certain age and we start getting into the old wrinkly stage because some of us get old and wrinkly and some of us don't get as wrinkly and some don't get wrinkled at all, you know, but it's the point that the outer beauty can fade. It can go away. Something can happen to you. I mean, like I said, I got scarring on me. I was never like that before. That like up here where you see it's like clear. This is how all of my body was. My face was all clear, you know. Anything can happen and change and you have to remind yourself and stay in the beauty of who you were and who you are and who you still are going to be tomorrow. Don't let anybody tell you any different that you are not a beautiful woman. Don't be high sedity with it. Don't put your head up high and be stuck up with it because that's, that's not what I'm speaking here. I'm speaking on the fact that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter what happens in your life, no matter who is in your life or who's not in your life, you are a beautiful woman. You are a goddess. You are a queen. You are a sister. You are a mother. You are a daughter. You are a cousin. It doesn't matter. The beauty within you is in the works that you do. The beauty in you is what you do and how you speak to the next person next to you, how you treat them. What are you thinking of, thinking within yourself? Because it's the intent behind everything that you do and say. That's where the beauty comes from. I hope that this has helped you on some level. I hope that this was not stretched out too long. Because actually I don't even know how long this, this has actually been. But I do hope that you will grow and learn more about yourself. Know thyself. Look within yourself. Again... I do, as I stated in one of my previous videos, I'm here to help you. I'm here to guide you and strengthen you. If you need spiritual, emotional, mental counseling, I am here for that. If you ever wanted to reach me and there was something that you wanted to talk about and need guidance in, please give me a call. 
I'm here. You can call me at 347-552-6853 or you can email me at sweetteebs at gmail.com which is S-W-E-E-T-T-E-A-B-Z at gmail.com. I hope that you will contact me if you need me. Many people have. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm now under Priestess Keffa. I was under Keffa Abe Manuk Ma'at, but now you can find me under Priestess Keffa. I also on my YouTube channel. You can contact me in many ways. I thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I hope this has been helpful to you, and I will be with you again soon. Ma'at beloveds. Have a blessed day.